God gives us tremendous peace in the kingdom, but in the natural, we're, it's not a time of peace for the church. It's a time of war. Yes. And the kingdom of God is always warring against the kingdom of darkness. And if we're not, we're not living like God wants us to. Amen. We really need to step up and realize that we're in a war. The weapons of our warfare are mighty. We have everything we need. And they are overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. I mean, we have everything we need. <laughs> and you know, I was thinking about the gifts. We've been talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And I believe God wants us to use them to war. You know, we have the word of knowledge. We can look at somebody and God will give us something and we can do war against a satanic attack or whatever. Word of wisdom. Faith. Faith is definitely a warring tool, a warring weapon. You know, I believe that as we use our gifts in, in the warfare that God wants us to, that's part of becoming one that Jesus prayed for us to be in John 17. He prayed, and you know, I don't know one prayer that Jesus ever prayed that didn't come to pass. <laughs> so when we... When he prayed for us to become one, guess what? You and I are going to become one with him. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Look at someone and say, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> now say it like you mean it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but using our gifts to expose the tactics of the enemy, that's, that's powerful. And, and using them, you know, I just believe that God wants us to become so one in our gifts that we don't look at someone and think, wow, I wish I had your gift, you know? We're not envious, we're not jealous, we're, we're just happy that you have your gift and I have my gift. And there, if we operate in our gift, that's what God wants. If you give a prophet a cup of water in the name of a prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. That's not a big gift. You know, but to God, it's doing what God called you to do. And, and so I just really believe God wants us to, to come into a greater dimension of unity than ever before. Now, I love this, this body of, of believers. I, I love you. I pray for you. I, I grieve over you whenever you're hurting. I, I love you guys. I love the, the safety that I feel here. You know, I don't know if you've ever been in, a, in an unsafe church where there was a lot of gossip going on and a lot of backs but I feel safe here and I'm, I'm so thankful for you guys you know I've made a practice for years now that when someone comes to me and goes hey Mark did you hear what Doyle did Pastor Doyle I said no but let's go talk to him <laughs> it pretty much stops it right now, you know, and, and let's do that. You know, whenever we had new members come in at Christ Chapel, we would make a covenant together with them to uphold them and not talk about them and, and um, just, just made a covenant that we was going to be their friend and we wouldn't do anything to hurt them at all. So <clears throat> let's guard and grow in what we have with zeal that's, that's birthed in love. You know, we're, time's short. Let's get with it, amen. Um, I had a friend of mine. It was probably, I have a friend. He's still my friend. Um, it was probably 49 years ago that I used to run around with him when, before I saved. And, and, um, but one time he said, just out of the blue, he said, I'd die for you, Woody. That was my nickname, Woody, red-headed woodpecker. <laughs> it's not red anymore, so you don't, you, you don't need to call me Woody. <laughs> but he said, I'd die for you, Woody. And that, you know, that shocked me. I never had anybody say that before. I, it was a new concept to me. But that's what we should be as the body of Christ. That we would go, I'd die for you. In the name of the Lord. You know, I'd give my life for you. I'd die for you. And then sometimes you think, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not that one. No, I'm kidding. 
we got to get our love intact or, or make sure we love one another with that kind of love that we would lay our life down for one another. It happens in other, other countries. They're, they're dying for each other. But I want to look at a, an Old Testament pa- pattern of what I think the body of Christ should look like, using our gifts to further the kingdom of God. And it's in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 12. I'm just going to skip down through it really quick. Uh, but there were a bunch of mighty men that wanted to come and join themselves with David's army and with King David. And it was for the kingdom. Um, they wanted to fight for his kingdom because they knew he was prophesied by uh, the prophet Samuel to be the next king. And so they wanted to uh, join with him, with David. Uh, and they were mighty men, helpers in the war. They were armed with bows and they could sling stones with their left hand, right hand and their left hand. <laughs> and they could shoot the bow with their right and their left. Now that takes talent. But they were mighty men. It says, uh, mighty men of valor, men trained for battle who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the face of lions. I mean, they had a determination on them. They, they had a zeal about them. They weren't messing around. They were swift as gazelles on the mountains. And, and so they could really do war. And I picture that, that that's what God wants us to be. Mighty men and women of valor. And, and with the weapons we use, and we're talented and, t- and able to use the weapons of our warfare in a mighty way for our king to build the kingdom. Um, and... So they came to David, and David went out to, to meet them in, in verse 17. Um, and David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, If you have come peacefully to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Now I'll stop right there, but I want us to see this pattern that I think God wants to release in our hearts that we want to join with our King Jesus and be a mighty army for him. The first thing that David, King David required was that they would come in peace. I love peace. You know, we can't build anything if we're not at peace with one another. We get at odds sometimes with somebody. You know, but we need to take care of it quickly and, and get back into peace. Peace is, they say that if you have a broken bone, that it heals stronger in that area than it was before it was broken. Because it, and that's a biblical thing. It comes to peace. So if you have at odds with someone, come to peace and it'll be stronger than ever before. But we can't mess around with, with uh, strife or discord or anything like that. Let's value the peace that God gives us here. That's, and David said, you, were, you know, that's a requirement. If you're going to be with me, you've got to have peace. And I think we could say that here. If you're going to be here in this church, you want to be a part of us, better walk in peace. Amen? Because it's so important. And God wants to use us. He wants to use all our gifts together. Gifts together. But we need to have peace. Uh, I don't care how great my gift is. If I don't have peace with others, it doesn't amount to nothing. Amen? Peace is something that will, it's like glue that holds us together. And we need that peace. And we better treasure it and guard it and don't let anyone come and try to steal your peace. Peace is the absence of strife. You know, there's no gift, Holy Spirit gift of strife. There's no class in college about strife. It's just devilish. And so we don't want any kind of strife. This was the king's request. Am I at peace with my king's desire and his purposes? And then it says to help me. Did you come peacefully to help me? Help me what? Build the kingdom. You know, David was, was um, next in line. Saul was out. He was fighting against David's army and David was fighting against him. God's will was that David would take over the kingdom and rule and reign as the king over his, God's kingdom. And so did he, do we come to help Jesus build his kingdom 
You know, sometimes I think um, we really don't think a lot about kingdom. How passionate am I to see the kingdom of God grow? How passionate am I to, to see the kingdom of God thrive in Mercer County, in, in this building, in this city? How, how dear is the kingdom of God to me? How often do I pray the prayer that Jesus told us to pray? Thy kingdom come, O Father. Holy is your name. May, may your kingdom come. May it be done in me as it is in heaven. May I walk in kingdom desires and kingdom ways. May I push forward the kingdom of God in my home, in my house, in my family. How passionate am I about the kingdom? You know, it's, it's great to be passionate about the church, but the kingdom is made up of everyone that's born again. And that's press on to see the kingdom I like I wish somebody would know more about preaching that than me but I love the kingdom of God amen um, this was the king's desire did you come to help me he wanted to see the, that God's prophetic word come to pass in his life and in, in his people's lives um, how dear is his kingdom to my heart is this my delight Jesus, I come in peace to help you. You know, we can help him. We're called to help him. Do his work on earth in, in one, as one body, as one person. <clears throat> There's a lot of scriptures that I'm not going to read tonight, but um, just... Meditate on the kingdom of God and saying, Lord, I want to help you build your kingdom here. I won't let anything come. I'm a warrior for that. I tell you, there's some things that I get upset about, and that's when people come and try to mess with the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. <laughs> you know, I mentioned peace, mentioned peace, and I see peacemakers here. I know there's peacemakers. I think I'm more of a peacekeeper, you know. I love peace, but if I... If I see somebody trying to bring discord in the body of Christ, I get upset because that's just opposite of our Lord, opposite of his desire. And so let's, let's, uh, let's help him by the power of God in us. <clears throat> One thing I'm kind of concerned about in the Western church is the, this thing of consumer Christianity. You know, that's totally opposite of what David was asking his soldiers to do. Did you come to help me? Or did you come to take from me? You know, consumer Christianity is not biblical. And I think, I think we need to get over that, that. That we don't come to church. Yeah, praise God like Mark did tonight, that we can come and receive and be healed and be ministered to. That's, that's awesome. But that's not all we do. We're not called to be a hospital. We're called to be warriors. We are an army for God. Amen. So that's, there's a, Steve Fado is a friend of mine that when we went to Minneapolis this year for a conference, he goes all over the world. He knows a guy uh, holding crusades. He goes all over. But he knows a guy, a good friend of his that's in Iran. And he's an American. And he went over there as a missionary and he married an Iranian girl, and that's his wife now, if he married her, yeah, you know, figure, <laughs> see, would that be right? <laughs> but they, they um, he's, he's one of the big leaders over there, over the house churches, I mean, he, he thousands, and um, they come back to America, he's got dual citizenship, both of them do. And so they come back to America every now and then to take a break and get a breather. And um, usually for a few months. But they had been in America recently and, and this friend of my friend said that his wife came to him and said, honey, I got to go back to Iran. He said, honey, you know, they're on the radar. I mean, they have their voice recognition stuff. They have cameras there. I mean, if they get caught, they die. And he said, honey, if we go over there, we may die. In fact, my friend said, when they leave the house, they plan on not ever coming back. 
it's that dangerous. And he said, honey, if we go back, we could die. And she said, yeah, I know. But I'm losing my fire here. Isn't that something? I'm losing my fire. I got to get back there in the battle. I got to fight this thing. I got to win people for the Lord. That bothers me. That bothers me a lot. Consumer Christianity makes me sick. And I'm right there with everybody. You know, I mean, I'm not saying, look at me, I'm perfect. But we got to get over that. We're here to just have everything fed to us and bless me and bless. You know, it, we, I think that consumer message has ruined some countries. Uganda, for one, there's, there's a... Anyway. We don't want to focus so often or too often on our, need, on our needs. Yeah, we have them. Yes, we can pray. And yes, God supplies. Praise God. But that's not why we're here. We're here to build the kingdom. And if you look at the requirements of, of what, who Jesus called to be in the kingdom, it's pretty strict. You know, leave Leave your father and mother. Leave your supplies. Leave your job. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love the body of Christ. <laughs> but you know, there's so much more for us to accomplish in God. If we would just give ourselves a good kick or have someone do it for us. Well, not you. <laughs> and not now. <laughs> seriously we got to encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching maybe exhortation would be good too you know how you doing on fasting who would you witness to this week have you have you shared the love of Christ with someone have you, have you prayed for someone that you didn't know have you built the kingdom of God lately Well, no, but I ate a lot of Cheerios. I mean, you know, that's kind of, isn't that sad? But God loves us, and he's not done with us. And there's grace abounds, grace abounds. Hallelujah for grace. Kingdom priorities, the lost, the heart of Jesus, his values, the leading of the Holy Spirit, following his nudging. I know a guy, he, he's passed now, but he ministered in India and all over the world. But he said when he, he got saved, he said instinctively he knew that obedience was the key to maturity. And that's always stuck with me. But he said he was going to his first Bible study meeting at a lady and he was riding his motorcycle or bicycle and he felt the nudging of the Holy Spirit to buy a bag of sugar, uh, you know, a sack of sugar. And he thought, that's stupid. I don't even know these people. I'm going to the Bible study. But he stopped and bought a bag of sugar and took it to the Bible study. And here the lady was going to have tea and she didn't have sugar. And she was so blessed by that. And everybody really thought that was awesome. Obedience. Buying a bag of sugar. I mean, come on. We can do things like that, and our, our maturity level grows. We'll go to the next level of obedience. Don't you love obedience? Yes. I do. I love, sometimes I don't like doing it, but after it's done and you see the fruit of it, I just love it. Thank you, Jesus, that, that I was able to do that. I need to do it more. Did you come to help me, Jesus says. And then he says, if you do that, my heart will be united to your heart. There's no deeper relationship than a united heart. You know, one version says knit. Your heart will be knit to my heart. And my mom just passed, but she, she used to knit all the time. And, and she was fast at it until she got kind of arthritis. But... It was so fun to watch her, you know, but when it was done, it was won. And this is what, what David's saying. If you come peacefully to help me, my heart will be united with you. 
United hearts. Don't you want that when you... I feel that when I come to church and people hug me and love on me. And I love them. And our hearts are one. It's such a beautiful thing. You know, <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell that story. <laughs> well, no, I won't. <laughs> but there's no deeper relationship than this. I, I think of David and Jonathan. And, and it said their, their, their soul was united like one soul or something like that. But they were so united together, so one with each other. And that's what God desires for us. The, Jesus is saying, is your heart united with my heart? Are you willing to be united totally with me so that we are on the same page always? So that we can accomplish what he prayed that we would, would accomplish? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is being one of one heart, one vision, one purpose, united together. Not going here and there and everywhere, but our gifts coming and your gift complements my gift, mine, yours. You know, I was thinking about that cup of water and Elijah when he uh, killed all those prophets of Baal. You think he didn't want a cup of water? I wonder who got a reward there by saying, here, Elijah, here's your cup of water. Good job. <laughs> he didn't kill the giants. Well, I'm making all this up, but you know. He didn't kill the prof uh, false prophets. But if someone gave him a cup of water, he got that reward. Uh, one vision, one purpose. And then it says... You're not, my heart will be united to, with you, but if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Mm. Won't betray me to my enemies. Have you ever had that happen to you in ministry, Pastor Gary? It's not fun, is it? Man, I remember we had a, in Christ Chapel there when we were going through the, the nasty whatever there the first year I was pastor there there was a a, a prophet that um, didn't like me because because I wouldn't let him come up front all the time and prophesy because it was a show and I just said why don't you just do it from your seat that's all I said but he didn't like me and one time he was he came and he poked me in the chest and he said you know, I'm the prophet here, and if you reject me, this church is going to, you know, be betrayed. Betrayal is not fun. I remember praying one time, Lord, when are you going to stop tearing it down, you know? Cause, but praise God, it, it became a safe place, and it was beautiful in the end. Uh, but won't betray me to my enemies. I tell you, I mentioned this before, but gossip, we cannot allow that. We cannot allow that, not ever. And it's, you know, sometimes you got to work things out, you know, and, and share some things with the leadership or whatever. But I'm talking about malicious gossip. We can't allow it. Our gifts will not operate in a good way if we allow things like that. Don't betray one another. This is, a, this is an army. I love people that's been in my life. They're, you know, I've used this analogy before. It's like a, I'm in a foxhole, you know, the, where they shoot out. At, and I got this guy at my back. There's one guy in particular I'm thinking about right now that if we were in a war and we were in this foxhole and I was shooting that way and he was shooting this way, I would not have to turn around and see if he was behind me. I know he would be there as long as I was there. He has my back and he would die for me. You know, he would not betray me to my enemy. Hey, over here. You know? <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but sometimes when, when we hear of a failure about a brother or sister, we just love to tell somebody about it, the flesh. God forbid. Amen? God forbid. I won't betray you. Will you betray me? 
Man, we can't afford it. It's just not going to be a kingdom building church if we have betrayal in our hearts towards anybody. No strife, no betrayal. No. We're after something bigger and something greater. And it's going to cost. It's going to. I know, honey, but I'm losing my fire here. You know that lady that. So it's going to cost us as time gets shorter, and it is. There's going to be a price to pay to serve God. And that's all right. Everybody else in the world about's doing it in foreign lands. I mean, it's no news to them. But we're after something so glorious and so huge, so beautiful. The kingdom of God, oh, won't it be wonderful? The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Shulamah, yeah. <laughs> glorious. Let's encourage one another. Let's esteem each one better than ourselves. You know? Let's encourage each other more and more. Let's rejoice when others advance. They're captain over a thousand. I'm only over 50. Praise God, they're a captain over a thousand. Amen. Praise God. Boy, I saw you advance. Man, praise God. Let's rejoice when others get advancement or a bigger gift than ours, if that's. Amen. Well, I want to close with the verse. Verse 22 of, of First Chronicles 12. It says, For at that time they came to David day by day to help him. See, they had all these things in place. Peace. They come to help. Their heart was knit. They wouldn't betray. From that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army, like the army of God. Wow. That's what we're shooting for. Amen. And it's possible in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of the Lord, I just speak blessing over this church. I thank you that it's a safe place. God, I make a covenant with them that I will not betray them to the enemy. God, I make a covenant that I'll bless them and I'll speak good of them. And Lord, we'll hold our hands tight together. We'll be heart knit to heart that we can accomplish your purpose, Lord, in this earth to see the kingdom come and advance. Lord, use us in a mighty way as we go forward. Do something new today in our hearts that we would see the potential we have in being one with you. Lord, I bless your name. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Holy name. Amen. Amen.